Now it's time for something different. Welcome back to the Hot Death Horror Podcast. It's been a little bit of a hiatus. Um, I've been taking a little bit of time off trying to get a little bit better because my last couple episodes, my guests were great and I was ass. So I apologize for that. But I think we're back with a brand new format. Um, Starting a little new segment here called Folklore Fridays. And with that, I have two amazing guests coming on with me tonight to talk about La Yarona, the Weeping Woman. And those two wonderful guests are my little brother, Dakota Greyhawk, and my wonderful homie, who is going to be starring in my newest feature miniseries, I guess. Not a feature, but she'll be featured in my miniseries, Midnight Midnight Feature is the name. Uh, Miss Samantha Hupp. So, whoops. There we go. I didn't want to do that. I'll edit that out. All right. So here is Mr. Dakota Greyhawk and Miss Samantha Hupp. How are you fine folks this evening? I'm good, besides the snow. (laughs) Very cold up in here, up here in Utah, but other than that, I'm doing great. Awesome. So it's cold where you guys live. Well, as we all know, I'm in Texas and it's it's a little chilly. It's 47 right now, I'm seeing, but it's been, yeah, it's been <laughs> in the high 60s and actually low 70s lately. So I, I kind of miss the cold from where I'm from. So I'm a little bit jealous of you guys right now. <laughs> um, So yeah, that being said, a little bit of a different set up tonight we're going to be doing a folklore friday um hopefully this will be like a regular thing we're going to be talking about popular folklore from the u.s from all over the world um and we're going to kick it off tonight with la llorona the weeping woman um i did pull up a little article here from the library of congress blog so i did not write this for all the copyright Peoples that want to come after me, don't do it. (laughs) Um, And I'll just kind of give a little brief rundown of what we're going to be talking about this evening. And then we'll just banter back and forth. And y'all tell me what you've heard about La Llorona. And we'll just kind of get into it from there. And if we sidetrack, we sidetrack. And we're just going to roll. All right. Sounds good. La Llorona. Is a uh, it's a Latin American uh, folklore based out of Mexico. It looks like um, sounds like there's quite not quite but a few different interpretations of what La Llorona is. Um, as I said, it means the weeping woman. Um, she's often closely related with children. In some stories, she's said to wail for her own lost or dead children. In many of these stories. She killed her own children when she was alive and is doomed for her actions to be a wandering ghost. In other stories, she appears mainly to women who have children, um, while in still others, she kidnaps children who are never seen again. Basically, the story is this bitch was mad at her husband or something and threw him in the river, drowned him, um, instantly felt remorse. No, 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 no. I'm wrong. See? Fuck me. She threw her, she drowned her kids in the river, instantly felt remorse, and then threw herself in the river. I think she drowned her kids as revenge to her husband or something. I read that somewhere. I don't remember reading it in here, but I read it somewhere else. Um, But La Llorona typically appears as a malevolent spirit, either a harbinger or a direct cause of misfortune to the living. Sometimes she takes the form of a dangerous siren tempting a solitary male late at night by confronting him as a pitiful Wobegon Wobegon figure under a ro- okay, I don't I don't like these words. I'm going to skip that sentence. <laughs> I'm trying not to say it. Uh, when offered assistance, she turns on the solicitous gentleman. Yeah, big words. Uh, the face of a skeleton or a wild metallic horse's head or no face at all. 
Sometimes she's observed simply roaming about at a distance, or most typically, she's heard weeping and shrieking through the night. A chance meeting with her is dangerous. That's kind of part of the folklore. Let's say you're out in the woods, you're camping, you're fishing, whatever you're doing, and you start hearing this bitch screaming or wailing, it's time to go. Uh, <laughs> that that supposedly is what seals your fate, right, is when you hear her. So thoughts from my wonderful panel here. Let's uh, start with Samantha. What, what did you think when you heard about La Llorona? I used to believe it. My grandma was a huge horror person, and so same with my uncle. And if I remember correctly, they're the ones who told me about her, but I've heard kind of the same thing. Like once she's heard weeping throughout the night, and I also heard about her killing her children to get back at her husband and feel remorse, and now she's haunted for it. So I never heard about the horse head or anything. I heard more of her being like a siren. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I, you know, interpreted as she was more like a siren. Yeah. The, the horse I did hear about that. like her kidnapping children to replace her own and her going after men. So mm-hmm. I didn't hear about her going for mothers. So that's a little different for me. And I'm from Florida, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, that one's a little different to me, too. I The going after men, I hadn't heard much about. It was every time I'd ever heard the tale, it was, you know, she, she would go after children. You know, like, don't don't let your kids go out in the woods and play alone because La Llorona's going to get them, you know. Yeah, I'm going to take them for her own. Yep. So, all right, well, Mr. Dakota, what about yourself, sir? Uh, <clears throat> a large part of this is, really pretty new to me i have heard like the names of the weeping woman and things like that before but most of that was mainly just sort of like when i was a kid it would would always just be like some sort of scary story we would just tell it to each other as kids like oh it's like 3 a.m you know there's this weeping woman that's going to come out and like steal you away forever or something like that i've never really heard like the true like backstory and origins and like of her drowning her own kids and then going after other people's kids or going after mothers that that part's new to me and it's like really interesting and some of it actually kind of reminds me of the other folklore uh, or legend i guess of krampus mm-hmm. did you, you said krampus yeah the, that's okay. not that i said okay yeah the 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 christmas like the same concept dude. of like stealing children but okay interesting interesting yeah because you're over in utah dakota so i imagine la llorona is probably not a big thing up there like you guys are more native american you know folklore like skinwalkers and things which yeah i found pretty interesting i mean i made a shitty movie out of it but oh man i used to be terrified of skinwalkers dude those things are (laughs) yeah those things are terrifying like i had heard a lot about skinwalkers and that'll be That'll definitely be another episode because I think skinwalkers are an amazing folklore too that we need to, you know, definitely cover. But just touching on it a little bit because that's where Dakota is, is over in Utah. And yeah, man, them things are because like they can shape shift, like they can take the shape of anything. Yeah. You, know, you, you can be out walking and you see a coyote or something and it like, mm-mm. I mean, this, they kind of say that about the weeping woman too, that she takes different forms. Do they? Okay. So a couple that I read about as well is like some of them she appears as this pretty distressed damsel in distress, like a petticoat. And then Mm -hmm. some of them say like she has a skeleton face when you get close to her. Hmm. So that really interests me. Yeah. It's interesting to see how she appears to so many different people. A ghost, a skeleton, a siren. Yeah, that. Okay, so (laughs) imagine you're out camping and you start hearing this, you know, screeching, wailing woman. And, you know, of course, you're probably going to go investigate, right? Like, and you see this skeleton faced thing in front of you, like instant shit pants. Like, I'm, (laughs) I'm it's going to be a bad mess. And I'm probably going to cry and run the opposite way. Like, I don't even know. 
I wouldn't even know how to deal with something like that. Well, you wouldn't have to, because supposedly most people die after they experience her. So <laughs> that's true. You hear the scream and it's like, you're gone. So yeah, just, just make it quick, make it painless as you possibly can. Cause yeah, I'm already terrified. If I, if I hear it, that's scary enough. But then if I see the horse head or the, the skeleton face or something, or even just a, a woman kind of randomly walking out in the wilderness somewhere screaming. You know, she doesn't have to have a horse head or a skeleton face. Like, just a woman wailing out in the woods. Like, that's... A red a flag. Not, <laughs> not a common occurrence. It's time for me to go. Dustin doesn't play with creepy stuff in the woods. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I would have to look, too. Yeah, so she'd probably, that'd she'd probably get me. <laughs> that was going to be my next question is, would you actually go look? Or would you just be like, no, fuck this, I'm out. I feel like I would, but I feel like that's one of those situations, like, unless you're in it, you just don't know. Right, right. But it's, I think it's more one of the more believable folklores. Mm -hmm. For yeah. me, at least. Yeah, no, for sure. It's, it's definitely believable because, I mean, ghosts and apparitions and things like I believe, you know, I believe there's an afterlife of some sort. And yeah. People can hang around for all sorts of different reasons. So. Especially if you do something like she supposedly did. I could see you constantly just weeping, especially like during the witching hours, which is when she supposedly appears. Yeah, yeah. Like you you, you drown your own kids and then you, you off yourself. Like you're, I'm kind of a religious person. You know, I'm kind of on the fence about it on, on either side, good and evil. You know, it's... It's not something that I'm really well versed on, so I won't get too into it. But I mean, I, I would think, like, I mean, that sounds like an offense that would, you know, get you sent to hell if there is such a place, because you're definitely not going to going to heaven for doing something like that. But to me, that, like, you, it would almost seem like you'd have to be stuck in some sort of purgatory. Like, you're right. not going to either, because you did something so fucked up, like, neither place wants you. Yeah, like a supernatural purgatory. Yeah. Thanks to the Vampire Diaries. <laughs> <laughs> Vampire Diaries. I always wanted to watch that show. I never did. Yeah, so I another thing I read, which I think, I don't know if you guys read it too, what I thought was really interesting is, um, I can't, I think it's Mexico that has this belief that she has like, she doesn't even know, doesn't realize her children are dead. And she's like carrying their bones in her back under that robe. Hmm. Is it like yeah, they're like in that. her back? That was pretty, pretty interesting. I've never heard something like that no, that's that's... from any folklores. No, carry your children's bones in your back. I yeah, and like so she doesn't right. even know they're really dead. She just spends the night wandering around looking for them, and they're inside of her. That was pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, sorry Dakota. That, I think like, we kind of uh, cut you off. Uh, no, that's fine. I'm, I was just saying that, like, I sort of interpret that as, like, sort of like a a Christmas uh, carol thing, where it's, like, those are sort of, like, the chains that she, like, like created in her life, and, like, in the afterlife, that's what she has to carry around. Those are the chains she has to bear is her children's bones on her back at all times. Right. I don't know, but... Hmm. Sorry. That'd I, make I, me weep. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, I I would be weeping for a long time. <laughs> Sorry if my screen just got all weird. I realized I hit a button and now I'm on full screen, so I can actually see you guys. Well, I can see you, Samantha. I can't see Dakota, but it's like we're all equal parts now. Yeah. It, it was all split so, up and weird. I have. I don't know if you guys have seen it or not. I haven't been able to actually like find any examples of what people. Like any drawn out examples of what she looks like. Yeah, no, I let me see. Here, I'm gonna exit full screen again. And I am going to let's see. I'm gonna share my screen. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. So I think. No. 
I thought there was a picture in here. Now, you know, that's the person that wrote it, I think. Okay. So here where I was searching it, let's click images. Let's see. Okay. So that's like, there's, there's obviously several movies about her, right? Like the, I don't remember which one it was, if it was this one, one of them had, um, oh, what's her name from the, the conjuring series the the woman uh vera how do you say her like vera farmiga farmiga i'm drawing a blank i know who you're talking about i just can't place the name yeah she she plays the she plays the wife in the in the conjuring so hang on see now i i done went and squirreled off that's her okay <laughs> yeah like okay now we're gonna go slow whatever yeah her She's super hot too, by the way. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, she was in. Which one was she in? Oh no, I don't want you being AI talker. I think it's How funny you... that uh, excuse me, they um always play all these really pretty actresses, but when you look up the folklore, it talks about how hideous a lot of people were. Yeah, like how disgustingly disfigured they were. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think she played the, but again, I didn't see the movie, so I don't know. I, I don't know that she played La Llorona. I think she just played a character in it, but yeah. anyway, we digress. This is this is kind of the common theme, I guess, that I had always seen. She was just like cloaked in like a white dress type thing with a hood. Like, yep. I don't think you ever really saw her face. Right. But, or at least yeah. you didn't live to tell about it. Right, yeah, it's no one's gonna be catching a picture of her, I'm sure. So, um, have have either of you guys seen any of these movies? I haven't. No, I haven't I'm gonna have to look some of those up. Okay, Dakota. Yeah, I haven't seen them either. Actually, I haven't seen them either. See, we're we're. We're 0 for 3 here on a horror podcast. We haven't seen these horror movies. <laughs> I know, that's bad. Oh, we're messing up. Oh, no. I don't think it's, I don't think that's a terrible thing that we haven't seen those movies. All right. So can you still see my screen? No. Okay, good. Just wanted to make sure I'm not still sharing Pornhub or something, because sometimes <laughs> I close that down. You know? A little bit embarrassing. Um. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of what she looks like i guess is like that cloaked in white type of deal yeah um, like you said who knows how much of that's true because there again there's interpretations of her having a skeleton face a horse's head there's all kinds of different interpretations of what this crazy chick looks like um now that being said the there are i know there's at least one movie on tubi right now about her i don't remember if it's the curse of la llorona or just la llorona i mean there's I can think of at least three movies off the top of my head um, that are about her. I'm sure there's more, um, but the main one I was thinking of was with the uh, Vera. I don't. I don't know how to say her last name, but the lady from The Conjuring. Right. Uh, yeah, she's. That's the one that I was thinking of. Is the one with her in it. And I've heard that that one's really good. So that could be a possible movie review or something sometime. You know, maybe on your podcast, Samantha, because you're you like doing the reviews. I know you like doing the classics though. So. Yeah, I mean, with her being so well known, I feel like it could be a classic. Could be because it's yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a pretty old folk tale, so the movie doesn't necessarily maybe have to be old, but the folklore is old, so maybe it qualifies. Right. Okay. Uh, Dakota, were you saying something? I'm sorry, dude. You're kind of muffled a little bit, so and I I, guess, I think that's my speaker. So it might be me because I I like have like headphones on with like a pretty terrible microphone so it uh it might be me i don't know if i should disconnect it because i don't want to like create echoing again but i don't hear any echoing or anything it just like right now i could i could hear you it's like the volume kind of goes up and down so i think it might it might just be the the host site here or just my speaker or something so i wouldn't worry about it too much i just thought you were saying something so i, I wonder if that ha if she has anything to do with the weeping willow trees <laughs> just with the names Hmm. I don't know. That's like a like constant something. frowny face. Right. The room's always hanging down. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I, bet, I mean, there's probably a listener out there right now somewhere. You know, no, it doesn't have anything to do with it. 
<laughs> you never know. Getting all crazy. I know. You never. That's I don't. Inspiration. Know. I don't know. I don't know how they name you know trees and stuff. It sounds like it would make sense. Yeah. It sounds like a perfectly logical reason to name a tree a weeping willow because it's. Like <laughs> it always looks like a sad tree. So I mean. Right, yeah, it looks like a sad tree, and that you know. I would believe it. If somebody told me that that's how a weeping willow tree was named, I would believe it in a heartbeat. It makes sense. It yeah. does. It makes a ton of sense. So, okay, well, uh, more about La Llorona here. Let me... Oh, crap, I shut it down. Oh, never mind. Uh... Ooh, get him. Sorry. Okay. It's how Skinwalker. <laughs> You're right. It's the thing. It's the thing. The thing. Good oh my God. I watched that for a movie review. And right next to me was my husky puppy. I'm like, I looked at him during that first scene. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you, I want you next to me now. Right. Yeah. That was a good movie. That's the, the one you and I talked about on your podcast. Yeah. That was a good movie. Okay, so I'm going to read a little bit more of this article here just to see if we can get into a little bit more creepy shit about her. Um, so, let's see. The beginning of her, I assume they mean La Llorona, was so long ago that no one knows uh, when was the beginning of her. Either I don't know English properly or this is not... I mean, it's the Library of Congress blog, so I would imagine that their grammar is more accurate than mine that just sounds like a weird sentence the beginning of her was so long ago that no one knows when was the beginning of her that is kind of weird actually <laughs> nor does anyone know anything about her at all but it is known certainly that at the beginning of her when she was a living woman she committed bad sins as soon as ever a child was born to her she would throw it in one of the canals which surround the city and so would drown it um, and she had a great many children. See, that's another thing I didn't know. I thought it was only two children. I didn't know right. that she had like a ton of children. So that's even worse. Like she just kept doing it. Like, what's wrong with you? Um, but whether it was, let's see. Oh, wait, hang on. I skipped a sentence. Damn it. Uh, she had a great many children. And this practice in regard to them, she continued for a long time. At last, her conscience began to prick her about what she did with her children. But whether it was the priest, whether it was that the priest spoke to her or that some of the saints cautioned her in the manner, no one knows. But it is certain that because of her sinnings, she began to go through the streets in the darkness, weeping and wailing. And presently, it was said that from night till morning, there was a wailing woman in the streets. And to see her being in terror of her, many people went forth at midnight but none did see her. So I guess that kind of answers the question. Uh, because she could be she could be seen only when the street was deserted and she was alone. So there we go. Uh, sometimes she would come to a sleeping watchman and would waken him by asking, what time is it? And he would see a woman clad in white standing beside him with her reboso, reboso uh, drawn over her face. And he would answer, it is 12 hours of the night. Ooh, some old English there. It is 12 hours of the night, my lady. <laughs> she would say, at 12 hours of this day, I must be in Guadalajara, or it might be in San Luis Potosi, or in some other far distant city. And, so speaking, she would shriek bitterly, where shall I find my children? That was my bitter shriek, just so you guys know. That's the best bitter shriek I can do. Um, and would vanish instantly and utterly away. And the watchman would feel as though all his senses had gone from him and would become as a dead man. This happened many times to many watchmen who made report of it to their officers, but their officers would not believe what they told. So, so she didn't kill everybody? Is that is that what you guys are getting out of this too? Like, yeah, like, that of gives me a deuce of vibes. Have like, except for obviously she froze them in that statue, but... Sounds like she zombified their brains. Right. But like, like how are, it just said like they're reporting it to their officers, but their officers didn't believe them. So it sounds kind of contradictory to me. Like she, 
she killed everybody who saw her, but yet there's some of these dudes that lived and went to go tell about it, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I thought I thought everybody died. As soon as you saw her, like, she, you were dead. So, that is a conundrum. Um, so, their officers would not believe what they told, but it happened on a night that an officer of the watch was passing by the lonely street beside the church of Santa Anita. And there he met with a woman wearing a white reboso. Man, I'm I'm going to say a white cloak because I don't know what the fuck a reboso is. I'm sure somebody will correct us. <laughs> Not, somebody will. Yeah, there will be something somewhere along the line. Somebody will come after me for my terrible, terrible grammar. Um, wearing a, right, a white cloak and a white petticoat. And to her, he began to make love. Ooh, rapey. Uh, he, he urged her saying throw off your your cloak so that i may see your pretty face and suddenly he, she uncovered her face and what he beheld was a bare grinning skull set fast to the bare bones of a skeleton when was this written in like 1703 like i don't understand some of this nomenclature anyway and while he looked at her being in horror there came from her fleshless jaw fleshless jaws and icy breath and the iciness of it froze the very heart's blood in him and he fell to the earth heavily in a deathly swoon when his senses came back to him he was greatly troubled in fear he returned to the deputation and there told what had befallen him and in a little while his life forsook him and he died okay so this guy didn't die instantly this was more of a he saw her, he fell like he was dead, but he didn't actually die. Then he came back and tried to tell the story. Is that what you guys got out of that? Yeah. yeah that part kind of confused me a little bit because when, it, it, uh, when it said it froze the blood in his heart, I thought it literally meant that it literally just like froze everything in his like system and it literally just killed him. But then it said he got up and his senses came back to him. It, it confused me a little bit, but I, I think Sounds like it kind of paralyzed him. Yeah, yeah, that's probably yeah. It. That's that's an excellent way to way to analyze that there because I yeah I frozen in fear. So there the you last, go. The way that, yeah, frozen in fear. There we go. Yeah, that I don't know. The that is I don't know when that was written. I probably should have looked and saw when that was written because that's some very old English type <laughs> verbiage going on in there. So I had to kind of read that slowly. So I won't read any more of that, but. Um, overall, as, as an old folklore, La Llorona, on a creepiness scale of, let's say, one to ten, what are we giving Yarona here? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give her an eight. Eight? Yeah, I'm gonna give her an um, eight. I would give her, like, a seven. Seven. Okay. Yeah, just because I can't tell if there's really any the weeping and wailing. I don't know if I would say it's too creepy being a woman <laughs> and an okay. emotional woman, but the fact that she just lures you in, like I've heard about her having a beak, the skull face, the horse head. That's what gives me the creepiness. So, and the fact that she lures people to paralyze them in fear and I, I'd give it a seven. I could think of scarier ones. So for sure. Okay. Dakota. I think I would also give it an eight because like while that original story is pretty creepy, I think like if you were were to actually put yourself in like a real life situation like that where you were just kind of walking down the street late at night or something like that and you heard like wailing or something like that and then like you see that kind of face that would be that would be terrifying in my opinion i think it's because i worked at the prison so long that that doesn't surprise me (laughs) yeah i i can see that i i can definitely see that that's funny i i have a corrections background as well i i used to work in a, a prison a long time ago and So the reason why I'm giving her an eight and I almost gave her a nine is because of the children thing. Like any, you know, anybody that commits a crime against a child, especially your own child, like that automatically puts you way up to the top of the, you know, creep fuck off factor. Right. Yeah. Um, The wailing. 
I, yes, like you said, it, it wasn't an uncommon occurrence to hear wailing and screams, all sorts of weird shit in a prison. You know, it, it happened, but not in a forest or in the middle of a city. True, street, you know? true. I guess yeah. I keep forgetting that part. It's an isolation, it's in, like isolated places that she does that. So that that is creepy. I yeah. Right. Okay. And I think it kind of depends too, though. Like, what kind of wailing are we talking? Because when I hear wailing, I think somebody like screaming, you know, like out of terror. I I don't think sobbing uncontrollably. I don't think like she's crying. I when I think wailing, I think somebody losing their ever loving fucking mind, screaming. So. Uh, that kind of ups the creep factor a little bit for me too. So yeah, and and eight for her because she killed her kids, um, and she didn't do it like she didn't poison them so they'd go to sleep. Like she, not, and I'm not justifying here in any way to you know harm kids at all. But what I'm saying is like she didn't think to make it painless on them or something. You know what I mean? Like right, like, said they were going like, to go take a bath. Yeah, like there was a lady in real life that did that too, like drown her kids in the bath or something. Like that's oh yeah, awful. yeah, like that's terrible. That's awful. So like that's what she did. Like she did it in a horrible, painful way. Where like they suffered, you know. Like not only did you kill your kids, you made them suffer. Right. You know? So that that takes her way up on the crazy scale too. So and like, then the fact she couldn't come to terms with it, so she walks around at ghosting hours looking for her kids weeping. That that that's creepy too yeah exactly like if i've always said it too like those people that do like murder suicides like save the bullets and just do yourself you know what i mean like yeah. don't hurt any, don't hurt anyone else around you don't hurt your family don't do stupid shit like that like if you want to go just go take yourself out don't don't hurt your kids and your family you know so okay. yeah that that takes her immediately above a five or a six to me because that's you know yeah. When I, when I think when I think five or six as far as creepy, I'm thinking, you know, like Bigfoot or something like that would be creepy and scary, and I wouldn't want to run into him. But at the same time, it's it's a big ape out in the woods, you know. Like, <laughs> it, it's gonna be creepy, and I'm gonna be terrified. But it's a big wilderness beast, so it's not, you know, it doesn't know any better. Like that's what it does, is it hunts. So mm -hmm. to me, that's not it's, it's not that creepy. So all right well creepy scale so eight for me seven for samantha eight for dakota not too, not too bad uh, yeah i mean sorry. so so we we find her creepy we'll just say that we definitely <laughs> yeah find her yeah, creepy yeah. And, and, and terrifying and we would not want to mess with her if the opportunity presented itself yep i'd probably be the first one to go too yeah that's it's like that old saying goes i don't have to be faster than her i just gotta be faster than you <laughs> i am out um okay so i wonder uh, who all would run to her and who would just yeah. walk the other way Wait, there's gotta be somebody right yeah that'd be a fun poll i mean we we were talking earlier about who would go investigate so that, right, yeah, you said you'd go investigate. <laughs> so, okay, what? Let's take it the other direction. Instead of being terrified of her, like, despite all the things that she did, like, say you didn't know any of that. You just, you heard this wailing woman out in the woods, cloaked in white. And let's just say she had the skeleton face, but you couldn't quite see it up close. You know, you, you just knew there was something creepy out in the woods, right? What? what what intrigues you about that? What makes you and what makes Samantha say, I want to go check that out? I guess because <laughs> this is gonna sound so petty, but I like to go places that are excluded, kind of like a boat ramp in the middle of the night to cry it out. So I'd be intrigued to see who's out there and what's happening. I don't know. That's why I'd be the first one to die. So that's fair, though. That's I just, fair. I get intrigued by it. Like, what has you out here in the middle of the night going ape shit? <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. That's Are you fair. Like me? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's that's. I mean, that's a, a morbid curiosity, right? Like, there's yeah. And just if you see something so out of place, naturally, 
I'm drawn to it. If I see somebody in a petticoat in the woods, I'm gonna be like, that doesn't belong here. I need to go look at that. <laughs> okay, yep. Yeah. No, that's that's a perfectly logical reason to want to go check out a woman crying in the woods. I mean, yeah. Really. So now okay. she's shrieking. I don't I don't know how I'd feel. See, and it's so you hear I'll, everything. I'll wait, yeah. So. I'll I'll wait my turn. But yeah, that's that's something I wanted to touch on. So all right. Dakota, what about yourself? What what would make Dakota say, I need to go check this shit out? Or would you just not? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, uh, I feel like it would sort of have to depend on, like, uh, on the de definition of weeping. Because, like, yeah, if it was screaming, like you said, I'd just be like, nope, nope, screw this. I'm out. You can you can go sc scream and cry all you want. I'm out. I, I'm going to check that out. But if it was sobbing, like, more of, like, depressed, like, she was mourning for her children, then it, like, it would sort of intrigue me a little bit. But at the same time, I don't know how I'd feel about seeing her, seeing a woman just like out in the middle of like the woods or or just in the middle of the street, just sort of like in a white coat, just kind of wandering about. But I guess it would be sort of like if it was more of like a sob and just more mourning, that would get me to sort of kind of check it out a little bit. Mm hmm and that again that that's another perfectly rational explanation to go checking something out in the woods so you you kind of touched on were were you done explaining yours i'm sorry uh, yeah i did have another thing to say but i guess I'll okay go ahead no go ahead man please uh, i was just sort of thinking that like in a lot of the stories and um they it says that she covers her face like with that one guy that saw her at the church. And in one of the stories I read, uh, you guys probably read it too. It said that uh, before she died, she was one of the most, she was like the most beautiful woman ever. And so, and then like after she dies, she like has like a skeleton face, a horse face, maybe some kind of shape-shifting face. I don't know, I feel like there's some sort of connection there that once she was once a, a beautiful woman and then she was cursed with some kind of like terrible face afterwards. Like maybe that was her fate afterwards. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, that's that's an interesting viewpoint, sir. Because you're you're right. It she could have been gorgeous in real life, and then because of what she did, like that's part of her curse. Like you're now a horribly disfigured, disgusting looking creature, you know? So, yeah. so far, two out of the three of us are goners. <laughs> right? Well, no, we're all going to be goners. I'm just letting you know right now. We're all so, you'd look goners. to? I would look to, and kind of like Dakota said, he, so you can tell we're brothers. We think kind of the same. He he was kind of going down the road I was going to go down, right? So, it number one, it depends on what kind of wailing we're talking about. Because if, if it's like a banshee, you know, just... Ah! Just, That's the word I was looking for earlier. Okay. Was it a banshee? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If if it's something just balls out, crazy banshee screeching, I'm probably not going. <laughs> I'm just yeah, gonna no throw problem. that out there right now. Like I, I consider myself a reasonably courageous person. I guess you know, like. I'm not going to go chasing danger, but I'm not a bitch, right? Like, <laughs> but I, so it's in my nature to kind of be, to be inclined to want to help people, right? So a woman, especially if I hear a woman, you know, crying, sobbing, you know, <laughs> something like that, that was a terrible impression of a woman. Crying, right? <laughs> I was like a sad puppy. Yeah, probably not like that. We're, we're, we're just, we're rolling with it. I'm not even going to edit it out. Fuck it. Um, it, if I hear like a woman crying in the woods, I'm probably, my first thought's going to be, oh my God, is that somebody crying? And then number two is what's wrong with her? What happened? Is she okay? Right? So that's, what's going to make me going to want to go check it out is if I hear that sound, if I hear a woman crying in the woods, I'm going to be like, okay, somebody's hurt. Something has happened. Uh, you know, I need to go check out if this person needs help. 
you know, whether my phone works or not, I can call somebody, you know, whatever. But that's going to be my first inclination right there is to go check out and see if, you know, see if someone needs help. Um, or like I said, is she hurt? Is, is, is something broken? Did she break a leg? Did she, you know, is, is she missing a child? You know, that's, that's going to be my curiosity. That's what's going through my head immediately. If I hear that sound now, like we said, if, if we hear like a screeching banshee, it, I don't care what's wrong with you. <laughs> you can deal with that yourself. Cause I'm out. I'm, I'm, I don't want no part of that. I'm not going to some screaming banshee in the middle of the woods because that never ends well. And it won't end well for me. So <laughs> I, I don't want no part of no screeching banshee. So, okay. So we all know why we're going to look at it. Why are, I, I know we kind of briefly touched on it, but I just think for some, you know, maybe some comical purposes or something, I don't know, but why are we running away? What, what about that scenario has you saying, fuck this. I'm just completely out. If she's shrieking, like screaming in the middle of the woods, and I can't see her face, but I can see everything else. Something just isn't going to be right. I'm going to go the other way. Yep. Agreed. Because I've seen too many horror movies and that just screams bad. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, Dakota, there you go. Uh, for me, um, uh, for me, if like, if it if if it was like a soft cry, and I was going to go check it out, but I haven't gotten close enough for her to kill me yet, um, and I like and if her body or if I saw if her body was like really disfigured or if I saw like a glimpse of her skeleton face or something, or if I did see like if it was possible I saw like like her uh, her child's bone her children's bones on her back. That would be the reason I would run if I if I saw bones on somebody's back. I'd just be like, nope, something's wrong. That's not cosplay. It's not even Halloween. I, I'm gone. <laughs> so appearances, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, for me, plain and simple, because it's in the fucking woods. That's why I'm running. It's in the woods. It's, okay. It's in Good the fucking answer. woods. Yeah, it, it's it's in the fucking woods. Shit like that's not supposed to happen in the woods. <laughs> like you said, Samantha, we've all seen the horror movies. We know how this ends, right? Like, yep. It's in the woods, and it's a weird sound of a person that didn't come to the woods with me. Bye. Like the the crying woman. Yeah, I'm gonna be inclined to want to go help. I never said I would. I said I'm inclined. Touche. That's I, true. I, you did I, not I, say I, you would. I said I'm you'd be inclined. inclined. I said I'm inclined to want to help people. Especially a woman crying, right? I do think I do think that's part of it. Where she appears to you at? Yes, exactly. And that's you're in the woods. <laughs> like, why are you in the woods crying? Like, it it doesn't make sense to me. Like, I've been here all day. I set up my tent. I've gone down here and I've gone all over. Like, you weren't here earlier, and now it's nighttime and creepy, and you're here and you're crying. I'm gone. That's the number one reason for me is because it's in the woods and it's not supposed to be in the woods. So I'm out. Yeah. And the, the time of night. Yes, exactly. It's late at night. It's, it's not time for you to be crying out in the woods. It's that, that time has passed. You should have done that in the daytime. If you want to know. I don't know if the witching hour would intrigue me more or scare me away. <sighs> Maybe I just have a death I. wish. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you're braver than I. Because, again, I'm inclined to want to help. But at 3 o'clock in the morning, or midnight, or whenever, after dark, 7 o'clock p.m., if it's dark, like, I, I just don't know that I'm going to, you know, that I'm going to go chasing after something like that, you know? I, well, I, just, I mean. Because you don't know if it's an animal, you know, maybe it is a Bigfoot. Maybe, it, you know, you, you don't know what it is. And that. I think that's the very interesting part because there's that angel and devil on our shoulder, right? There, mm -hmm. There's an angel over here saying that that could be somebody hurt. We should go check it out. We should see if we can offer help of some kind, you know, or maybe that's the angel saying, get the fuck out of here. Who knows? I don't, I don't know who's saying what, but I would think more of the devil is going to be like, Ooh, 
gotta go check that out. You know, <laughs> like I don't know. I, maybe I'm overanalyzing. I just I, I I think there's two sides to everybody, and I think I think you are more of the you know kind of courageous, outgoing. You know, like I I need to check this out no matter what it is because I'm just curious and I. I want to find out if there's something beyond my, my comprehension, you know, mm-hmm. I, I want to find out if there's something that's real that I don't know about. Like, I just, I have to know if it kills me. Well, then hopefully somebody will tell my story. You know? Exactly. Am I kind of right about that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I also wonder though, cause like some of the folklore say she just appears to them. So I wonder if they could turn away if she just appears to you. I mean, it's gonna be hard just to ignore something that just pops up in front of you. That's true. I, I didn't think about that because it yeah, the, the legend says you hear her wailing, but then like she's she's just all of a sudden there. Yeah. You know? So yeah, I mean that's that's a very good point. That's a very strong point. Because yeah, if you're just sitting there and you hear it and all you're like, whoa, what was that? And then bam, there she is. I imagine you'd probably be in a trance. So yeah, I mean, uh, well, that's what it says. Is is you know the guy was like, hey, take off your thing so I can see your face, and then mm, he's you know he's frozen. <laughs> like, so who knows? You may not have a choice with her. Yeah. You know, maybe that's another thing about her is you may not have a choice. Like, like they say, once you hear her, it's too late because you hear yep. it, and then boom, she's there and. It's it's Gonzo time for you, so that that could be moral something. Moral of the story: cool. Don't stay up late. <laughs> yeah, right. Moral of the story: Don't go fucking camping and pay attention to screaming. Put earplugs in if you think you're screaming. <laughs> yeah, if you don't hear it, it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't hear it, it didn't happen. Just just go. It's time to go. Don't mess around with that. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. I used to like camping until tonight. So. <laughs> oh no! So you ruined that. <laughs> And yet we're all going to be out in the woods. Granted, it's not nighttime, but. Well, it will be nighttime. Oh, it will, okay. It will be nighttime. Yeah, you're, you're talking about for our uh, our film shoot, right? Yeah. Yep. So for those that didn't know, Miss Samantha here is going to be playing the role of Lucy um, in my upcoming, yay, <laughs> in the upcoming midnight feature, my episode, Honey Hole. Um, that's the segment I'm directing. Dylan Brown is going to be directing a segment. Joshua Brucker is directing a segment. Connor Flynn and Michael Rock. Um, we're doing five episodes. They're all directing an episode each. Um, and Miss Samantha has taken it upon her kind heart to make the drive all the way here to Tejas <laughs> to be in my silly little episode. So, yeah, I, I definitely thank you for wanting to make that commitment because that's huge. It gives me Diablo vibes. I don't know if you played that game. I have not. I've heard about it and I, you know, I've I've heard it's phenomenal. Like people love it. And yep. I I have never played it. Um, you know, spoilers aside from my episode, it, it's there's gonna be some there's gonna be some creepy shit in the episode. Like I think mm-hmm. I think it's gonna be my creepiest yet, I'm hoping. You know, oh, I hope I didn't spoil it by saying that, comparing it to no, the album. No, 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 that's fine. No, you, did, you didn't spoil anything there. It's it's definitely kind of, um, that's in the, that's in the description of the, uh, the Indiegogo campaign is it, you know, it has something to do with uh, like a Satan worshiping ritual, right? So we, we all know that it's about that. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, Samantha is coming down. She's going to be playing um the role of lucy in that and yes we we will be in the woods it's not going to be way 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 out in the sticks in the middle of nowhere it's going to be literally minutes from like a big huge subdivision uh right here in the woodlands texas the suburb of houston Um, so if i don't make it back we know what happened (laughs) she found me (laughs) If she doesn't make it back, that's she's there. We didn't do it, I promise. Something else happened. <laughs> it was, was lawyer Um, but yeah, it will be at night. Um, I, I don't, I don't want to do it like way late at night. I don't want to be out there at midnight or nothing. So it'll. And luckily, this time of year, it gets dark kind of early. Yeah. Um, so I imagine six, seven o'clock, it'll be dark enough. Like I don't want it to be pitch black while we're out there, but it's pretty heavily wooded, so we're not gonna. 
we're not going to have a say in that really. Like it's going to get dark, but there's going to be a lot of us. Um, and I do plan on bringing like a generator and stuff so we can have lighting so we can see. So, and it, it's going to be, it's going to be a blast. It's going to be a lot yeah. of fun. And hopefully we don't see La Llorona while we're out there. Cause there is a river. Or hear her. <laughs> yeah, right. No, cause there is a river right next like right there it runs right through the area that we're going to be filming so a river so if i scream river. i wonder if it's going to be like a bloody mary thing show up here <laughs> yeah no don't don't you put that voodoo on me touche <laughs> so yeah okay now i'm creeped out now i don't want to film the episode so i, I <laughs> can it scrap it we're not doing it no, I'm just kidding. We are definitely doing it. That's going to be great. It's going to be a lot of fun. And again, like I said, I thank you so much for wanting to make that huge drive to come out, come down and do it. If I love, I love horror and folklore, and so I definitely don't mind. Cool. Well, I'll be be really happy to have you. It'd be nice to meet you in person because I haven't had that opportunity yet. So it'd be nice to meet you in person, and that'd be it's going to be a lot of fun. So I got some got some talented people lined up to help. The Stephanie Elizabeth is going to be in it. She uh, she was in one other film that was filmed locally here. Um, she was in another film. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head now. Uh, the Pill. I, yeah, it's called The Pill. Um, anyway, it was filmed locally. It was filmed up in Huntsville, which is about an hour north of where I'm at. So she's got a little bit of theater experience as well. So she's got some experience. Um the uh, Rick, the guy that's playing the other main character alongside me, uh, he doesn't have any acting experience whatsoever, but he, well, he does, actually. He was in the little news segment I did for the director's cut of Lights Over Montgomery County. Okay. He's got that. But other than that, he has he has no other experience. Um, and then Eric, who also contributed to the campaign, he's associate producing. He's actually going to be playing two roles in the, in the film. I won't say which ones, but because you won't see his face in one of them. I kind of give it okay. away now. Spoiler, but you won't see his face in one of the roles. So, yeah, the person that we had lined up to do the other role kind of backed out um, because he found he he heard subject matter. And he's a pretty religious guy. So he's like, nah, sorry, I don't really want any part of that. So we I can understand that. I don't yeah. you know, I don't fault him for that to each their own. You have your beliefs and I'm going to respect that. So he he respectfully declined and kind of backed out. So okay. I'm like, well, shit, I could probably find somebody else. But I mean, we're a week away now. Like, basically, we're a week away now. So I was just like, Eric, will you please do this other role? And he he's all about it. So anyway, uh, we are not here to talk about my episode. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I, I do that every time. And I try really try not to. Like, I, I kind of go down that road of talking about my shit. And I... I try not to if it's not the main subject of, you know, the main topic of conversation. But I feel like it correlates, though. It does. Because like you said, we're going to be out in the woods next to a river. I don't want no La Llorona vibes, okay? <laughs> so we're, we're going to just shake the salt and do the voodoos and do what we got to do to keep that bitch away from us while we're <laughs> out here. Cause like I said, it is very, very close to a neighborhood. Um, like it literally is walking distance to a neighborhood. So, um, hopefully we won't run into no La Llorona's. Okay. Cause we don't, we don't want her bugging our, our movies. Dakota, you're, you're the writer here. So if we meet our deaths, you're going to have to write it nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. He, I, he I knows how try. we all die in this thing. So, oh, that's a spoiler. <laughs> no, we don't all die. We don't all die. Um. Yeah, but Dakota's the writer of that, Mr. Freaking Fantastic Author. Um, I honestly, I can't believe how talented of a writer this kid. I say kid, he's not a kid, he's an adult. Um, but he's my little brother, so I call him kid. Um, super, super fucking talented writer. And I really, 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 really... Hope he puts out a lot more stuff and gets very well known because he deserves it. And it would be like, I, 
I like to see people succeed. Like that's one of the things that makes me happy. I know it does you too, Samantha, because you know, I see your posts on Facebook and stuff and it's like seeing people do well and succeed with, you know, horror movies or just whatever they're doing, whether they're a writer, an actor, a director, whatever. Like if I know that person, like if I don't know you, then it's like, Oh, that's cool. It's a movie coming out. But like, if I know you, especially like that to me, it's really cool to see that somebody's doing well, you know, it's like, Hey, I know that guy, you know, it's, I love that feeling. I think it's great. And I, I yeah. want that for my, my little brother. I want that for him really badly. And I think it would be it would be phenomenal to see him make it as, as an author and get his shit out there because he has the talent to do it. And I I am going to push him until he <laughs> hates me. Um, because I think that he needs to, you know, if I thought yeah. that he sucked as an author. I, I would be honest with them and I would tell them, I think you probably need to work on this. You know, like I'm not an author. I don't know shit about writing, but, you know, I would give him my honest opinion. And my honest opinion is that he's a phenomenal fucking writer. And I think he needs to write more. And I think that he needs to write a lot of your own story of his own. What do you think, that, Dakota? Will you write that story? That I am definitely thinking about after this, like this podcast, I might just like sit myself down and just like start writing it because I, I, I have tons of ideas. <laughs> nice. It's an interesting concept that I want to tackle because I haven't written many horror, but yeah, it's like this <laughs> La Llorona stuff. Th- this is like interesting. Like it, there's something there, like very creepy, just very interesting concept to me. <laughs> I'd be interested to see if anyone has any stories with her, like anyone in our age groups or anything. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah I, I would like to hear that as well. If anybody knows any stories, if anybody's had any kind of experiences, you know, like I, I would like to hear some of that first. And like, did anybody actually experience this lady and live, you know, because it, it sounds like some people died, some people lived or like they lived and then they died shortly after, like, you know, did anybody get that chance to tell their story before they died or did they completely live through it and they're alive and well now, you know, like that, that would be interesting to hear because you hear people talk about Bigfoot experiences and you hear people talk about going through alien abduction experiences and skinwalker, experiences. you know, like there's, there's been people that have these stories of these encounters, chupacabra, whatever, you know, like, are there any actual La Llorona survivors out there you know i am that was bad timing i said her name and he there it is again (laughs) i'm not saying her name no more (laughs) you caused this i'm not yeah i'm I'm not there no more i'm not saying her name forget it we're talking about now we're not talking about (laughs) we're talking about the Creepy lady. Make my face been sealed. <laughs> I, well, I mean, you've got the dog to warn you. Yeah, yeah. He's. I mean, you're gonna get warned. I've got a dog too, but he's kind of a he's kind of a dope. I love my dog, but he's kind of, he doesn't <laughs> even like he doesn't even like hardwood floors. Like if somebody breaks in my house, my dog is providing zero protection. I'm just letting that out right now because my whole downstairs is all hardwood and tile. So if anybody breaks in the house. Like, I mean, maybe if they come upstairs because there's carpet upstairs, but he's just too nice of a dog. Like, he just wants to love on everybody. Like, he, his his bark sounds ferocious. So maybe that'll be enough to deter him. But I'm just letting it out there that, yeah, if if anybody breaks in my house, my dog is not going to stop you. My guns will, but my dog will not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Well... Uh, we are pushing up against an hour right now, so that kind of flew by. I think uh, I think it was a fairly good episode. Anybody have any other you know input? Any deep dark desires about La Llorona you want to get out before we before we cut it here? No. No. Don't go exploring 3 a.m. if you hear sh- shrieking. <laughs> Solid advice, sir, and I am taking that advice. All right, well, I think that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for uh, the creepy white woman in the, or the creepy woman in the white Bagoso remote, whatever, the cloak thing, because I'm not saying her <laughs> name. Um, yeah, so definitely a, a creepy folklore there. Um, an eight on the creep factor for me, a seven for Samantha, and an eight for Dakota. 
So that definitely is a, a worthy rating. Um, she is definitely, definitely high on the creep factor. So I think, I don't know if we'll do this again next week. I'd like to say this will be a weekly thing. Um, and I'd like to continue to have, you know, this, I'd like to have all kinds of guests talk about folklore, but Samantha, you and I have talked about this in the past and I, I would love to do it again with both of you. Um, yeah, I'll do it next week if you want. Hopefully we can get into sirens or leprechauns or. Well, actually, no, next week we can't. You'll be driving next week. Oh crap. Yep. That is next week. Yep. And I'm so, driving yeah, 15 hours. Actually, so. <laughs> yeah. And actually I do, I have, um. Uh, I think I do. I do. I have another episode next Friday with another guest. So I, yeah, I've got some really freaking cool guests coming pretty soon. I'm not going to say who they are, but yeah, I've got some, at least I'm not going to say it while we're recording. I'll tell you guys after we get off, but yeah, okay. it's kind of surprise announcements there. I mean, they're solid. I'm, I'm really excited and happy to have these people come on. So um, anyway, I won't uh, drag on any further. Um, thank you so much, Samantha and Dakota, for coming on this week and talking about the crazy bitch and the white Roboso. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yes, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I really hope to do this again at some point in the future. Yes, sir, definitely. Uh, like I said, either either of you, welcome back anytime. Just say the word, and we'll we'll make her happen. All right, folks. Well, that does it for this episode of the hot death horror podcast thanks so much for tuning in and i hope to see you next time bye bye <laughs>